I met Brian Hamill, and right. Brian Hamill's Woody Allen still photographer. So we, I became friends with him, and then I, and then uh, years later, or maybe five years, he says, I'm there, and he says, uh, he knew how I felt about Woody Allen. I said, you know, he's why I became a comedian, and they do his routine. So he brings me to. Um, Michael's Pub. I knew all about what he goes there every Monday. That's so where he, he played the clarinet. Clarinet. So he head. brings me there, and he goes, uh, he goes, I'll bring you tonight. I'll introduce you. So I'm very excited. So Woody Allen comes over. He goes, he goes, Woody, this is a John Lovitz. He he became a comedian because of you. And Woody Allen goes, oh, I finally influenced somebody. Right. Nice. And I'm like, well, and I was kind of embarrassed. I go, well, you know, I did your teens. Blah, blah, blah. And I said, oh, I go, oh, we have someone else in common. We both love. I go, Willie Mays was my idol growing up. He goes, oh, Willie Mays. Yeah. Blah, blah, blah. So Brian said, you want to come to this set? He was shooting some movies. So I go, and, and then uh, and I'm talking to Woody Allen. And, uh, and uh, Brian took a picture of it. I, it's, at my house, I have a picture of when I met him on the set. So I said, I, and, I, and uh, um, I wore glasses like movie? him, and I, I had LASIK surgery, so I don't have to wear glasses anymore. But I, I, then I did. But okay. we're on the set. So I said, hey, uh, can I ask you some advice? I go, yeah. I go, well. Um, You're talking to Woody Allen. Woody Allen, yeah. And I said, you know, um, I go, you influence me so much, and sometimes I f I'm worried like that people are going to think I'm imitating you. And I go, but I go, but you had that with uh, 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 Bob Hope, right? And he goes, he goes, no, Mort Saul. I go, really? He goes, he goes, yeah. When I started doing stand up, they said if you just get rid of those Mort Saul mannerisms. You know? Wow. And then anyway, so was, I'm talking to him stuff. So then Brian the next day goes, hey, John, and I, and I said, Woody, thanks for you know letting me come to your set. He goes, he goes, oh yeah. He goes, he goes listen, anytime you want to come, just come. And I told Brian, he goes, oh, he never says that, you yeah. know. And, and then I got cast in the movie, which had no title at the time, Woody Allen Fall Projects, but it became uh, Small Time Crooks. Right. And, uh, and it was me and Michael Rappaport and Tony Darrow. So I know in that one, you were, you were thinking about using this thick New York accent because you were kind of basing it on someone you knew that was a Yeah, there was a guy named guy. Cha Cha yeah. who was Tony, owns a restaurant in the village. Yeah. He's on Wise Guys, or I think on Sirius XM, you hear him. But okay. that show's still going, you go, okay. Cha Cha. And he talks, I remember I met him through Paul. He goes, he, he, Cha Cha, he talks like this. Hey, Kevin Pollock, how you doing? And I'm not exaggerating. He talks like this. Right. Hey, Cha Cha, how's your knee? He goes, oh, it blew up. I got an inflammation. <laughs> and he talks like this. So I'm doing this scene with, you know, Tony Darrow, great actor, and, Woody, and, and Michael Rappaport, and, and, and Woody Allen and I are like this group of... Uh, 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 Small-time crooks. Crooks. So, well, they're all from New York. I'm from Tarzana here in L.A. So I'm thinking, I want to ask Woody, should I... I'm thinking I should do a character because I don't have a New York accent like they do. So, actually, I have a, that sketch on SNL, the Californians, I taught... I I, I, it's hilarious. And I talk like that sometimes, like Kielf I go California, <laughs> which I didn't realize I did. My friend started going, "What? She's California?" I go, "What? Oh, my!" All right. But I talk like that. That anyway. So I said, uh, "I want to ask Woody Allen if I should do it or not." And you know, I would hear that people would be in his movies, and if he didn't like the performance, he'd fire them. Mm -hmm. So of course, my nightmare was: I'm thinking, oh, if I get fired. I'll be the worst. I'll be By your hero. Dead. Yeah. This is why I became a comic. You would have killed you. You know, when I'm, I wanted to be Willie Mays, my, I'd be 12, my dad goes, there's more to life than Willie Mays. Then I wanted to be Woody Allen. He goes, who do you think you are, Woody Allen? Yeah. So now he hires me. <coughs> so Helen Robbins is his producer. Helen, yeah, I'm in New York to the movie. I said, uh, uh, can I ask, uh, I need to ask Woody a question, to, if I should do the character or not, because I don't want to be fired. She says, well, uh, he can't talk right now. He, I go, why? well, he's, you know, he's busy making the movie. I said, well, I'm, I'm in the movie he's making. Mm -hmm. I need to ask him a question about the movie before I start shooting. Is there any time I can ask him? Well, he doesn't really like questions. I go, well, what? Like, he doesn't like questions. When they told him he has, they go, your DP is Chinese. He said, oh, good. He doesn't speak English. He won't ask me any questions. Wow. He basically hires people for the job and then lets them go. Right. Not totally, but a lot. What sort if of the scene doesn't work, he'll go, oh, you know what, this isn't working. And then he fixes it. And it's the best because you go, Woody Allen, he knows what he's doing. He doesn't know what he's doing. He's going to fix the scene. So right. you feel so comfortable. Right. Like whatever he says, you, you go, whatever you want. So did you do a couple of takes with the accent? No. So what, ha oh, so what happened? So, so she goes, well, she goes, what's your question? I go, well, I don't know if I should do a character or not. These guys are from New York. I'm not. She goes, well, he probably, I just went out to play the part. She goes, well, he probably just wants you to be you. And, 
I said, well, can I just But you ask, want to hear it from can him. Can I ask him? Yeah, you don't want to hear it He's the director. He's right. made, she goes, well, he doesn't really like questions. So finally, I get to go on the set, and I see him. I'm like, I said, listen. I, 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 and I said, hi. I said, listen, I, I know you don't like questions. I go, but please, please, can I just ask you one question? It's about the movie. Just one, please. He goes, yeah, sure. I go, oh, okay. <laughs> yeah, no problem. I said, I wish I'd do a character now that I said the situation. He goes, well, as long as it's real. You know, he goes, as long as it's real, but that's fine. So the next day I have a scene, there's no dialogue. And he, and he took me, he says, I hadn't, the other guys had been working. So he says, listen, I want to tell you what I tell the other guys, which is, you know, if you want to change anything, you know, you can say whatever you want as long as it's about it, but say it however you want. I go, really? Because I'm thinking, I'm not going to change his dialogue. Right. But he goes, no, it's fine, which was shocking he said that. Sure. So we do the first scene, and he goes, now, I know I said you guys can do whatever you want, but this thing is like 20 seconds, so we should kind of stick to it, so we'll do this and this. Sure. And I didn't have any dialogue. So the next day is my first scene with lines. So we, we, we're in the scene where we, uh, we're tunneling to the bank. We end up in a, in a cookie store or something wrong. And I'm like, what are we doing here? And I'm like, oh, what are we going to do? Now we, gotta, we don't have any insurance. It's ridiculous. We got to do the thing. And I'm talking like this. So he goes, here, uh, John, come here. I go, yeah. And he goes, listen, uh, I think it's better you should just do it yourself, you know, because uh, it doesn't sound that real to me. And I'm not going to argue with him and say, no, no, it's a real guy th that talks like this. Right. He goes, it doesn't sound that real. And he goes, but I, anyway, he goes, I just, I said, okay. He goes, I, he goes, anyway, I just think it's better if you do it yourself because, you know, guys like us, we're, we're naturally funny and da, da, da. we're already funny. We can do this. And I said, okay, thanks. So I'm relieved I have the answer to my question. And I don't want to be fired. Anyway, I go back to my mark, right? And I, <clears throat> I started crying. Like tears is like, and I almost lost it, but like tears like, because I was so relieved. But also, he said, guys like us. Yeah. No, I've always wanted to be a comedian since I'm 13. Now, it's 29 years later, guys like us. And then thinking of my dad going, who do you think you are, Woody Allen? Now I have Woody Allen going, guys like us. I started crying. <laughs> and it, because he, basically, my idol just validated my whole life. Yes, exactly. Right. And I remember that night I called Dana. He goes, how's it going? I go, well, and I tell him the story. He said, guys like us. Dana starts, got it right away. He starts screaming, guys like us, guys like us. I go, yeah, he said, guys like us. He said, guys like us, guys like us. You know, and Dana, you know, idolized him too. And you did, and we all did. So, you know, and then it was just, it was just fantastic. And I had one scene with him. Right. And then he kept laughing. And I kept making him laugh. And like three days later, he goes, hey, John, I, you know, I, I just want you to know, I watched dailies, and I kept, you know, I would keep saying to him, you know, you're why I became a comedian. And I remember the, the first scene I had with him alone, he's telling me what to do, right? And normally, someone's telling me, I'm like this, okay, and you know me, but people that know me, they go, what's wrong with, Sourpuss. what's wrong with John? And they go, nothing. Well, he looks like he's naked. No, he's having a great time. Right. But they, because I'm just like, emotional. You know, he's fine. Yeah. But they think I'm like, whatever. Upset. Yeah, upset, but I'm not. But anyway. I'm not naturally always smiling. So anyway, he's telling me what to do. I'm, the whole time he's giving me directions, I, I'm literally like this. <laughs> like, a, like a strange person. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I couldn't stop. I was like so thrilled. I'm like, okay. Yeah. I'm not like that. Then I go to my market. And you know, I'm like, stop <laughs> smiling. Jesus, I got to get into the scene. I was like so elated. But we're doing the scene. It felt so in sync. I can't, I never worked with him. It felt so in sync. Yeah. Like I'd been working with him forever. I'm thinking, does he feel this? This is the new team. <laughs> Doesn't he know, feel it? I go, it was like, cr I've never been that and felt that in sync with somebody. Wow. And he wasn't trying to do it, but I just, because I imitated him so much and based everything, you know, yeah. uh, timing, I learned from him yeah. doing his routines. I mean, I did. So, and, and then at the end of the scene, he'd be laughing. So three days later, he goes, listen, I just want you to know. You're doing it. He'd go out of his way to be nice. You're doing a great job. And I, goes, and I saw the dailies. You're really funny. He goes, and he goes, and I was laughing at dailies. I never laugh at dailies. I said, oh, thank you. And he goes, no, no. He goes, you don't understand. He goes, I never laugh at dailies. And I want you to know you were making me laugh at dailies. I was laughing out loud at dailies and I was watching the screen. I could see myself laughing. I go, well, thank you. So I'm going, whoa, what a compliment. Because, you know, the whole movie, I'm like, you know, you're why I became a comedian. This yeah. is a dream You just want to live up to the fantasy. So now he's going out of his way to let me know yeah. that he thinks I'm funny. and I'm doing He was, couldn't have been nicer. So I, because I never laugh at daily. So, of course, me, being me, I go up to his, the, Michael Green, who was his camera operator, who used to be the focus puller. So I said, 
or maybe it was the DP now, but I said, so I go, Michael, I'd met Michael before, a really nice guy, I go, so listen, so Woody Allen, said, Woody said he never laughs at dailies. I go, is that true? He goes, yeah, hardly ever. And I go, oh, well, how many times? <laughs> you know, that's a comic, right? How many times? <laughs> and he goes, in 17 years, he goes, maybe like three times. Holy so shit. So of course I went, liar. <laughs> no, so I was just thrilled. And then I'd be doing scenes in the movies and I, I, we got rich, I had jewelry, so they're supposed to be inter- interviewing us on 60 Minutes. So now we're rich, so I'm, I'm like going like this. With my new jewel in the scene, you know, like my guys, and, you know, they're idiots. I'm like going, how's it going? Yeah, good, you know, I'm in charge of the insurance. and I'm showing up my jewelry, right? Yeah. So he's going, he goes, he starts laughing, and I'm like, fuck, I'm making him laugh. You know, yeah. I have pictures of the two of us like this. Just heaven. Yeah. Heaven. Heaven. Did you work with him ever? I've not. Well, you will eventually. You think? 